Have you ever heard someone say that music is math? Is this true? Let's explore together. Hi everyone and welcome to Music Theories where I explain and analyze all topics related to music theory, music history, and pop music. This video is part of a series I'm making exploring the fundamentals of music. So if you're interested in learning about things like melody, building chords, rhythm, and so on, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for the upcoming episodes. Also, please check out the previous segment on pitch, note, and tone to get the most of this video. If you're more into the music analysis or discussion side of things, I've got you covered. Check out some of the other playlists on my channel. If you don't know Pythagoras, he was an Ionian Greek philosopher who lived from around 570 to 495 BC. His thoughts and his teachings influenced the likes of Plato and Aristotle, and thus much of Western philosophy is rooted in his work. And while he was widely known as the father of numbers, it might also be appropriate to call him the father of Western music, based on what we think we know about him. You see, in the mind of Pythagoras, everything could be translated into numbers, and music was no different. He was wise enough to question why some sounds combined to create harmony, while others combined to create displeasure. He believed that the reason for this could be explained through ratios or proportional relationships between intervals. He also believed that the harmony within sound was related to the harmony within nature and the cosmos, and thus created harmony within us as humans. So on top of music theory, Pythagoreans are credited with the origins of music therapy by many scholars. Keep in mind as we move forward that while Pythagoras did indeed enjoy music, most of his work is rooted in his desire to prove his theory that our entire existence is made up of numbers. Music existed before he came up with the music theory. This was just his way of understanding it. He spent much time doing careful observations of strings of different lengths. I won't get into the specifics of his experiments here, but I do encourage you to read about it and I've provided some sources in the description down below. For today, we're going to do a quick overview of one of his most important musical discoveries, the overtone series. Overtones are frequencies, or pitches, that ring out over the fundamental pitch played. They're also known as harmonics. This is caused by smaller vibrations in addition to the fundamental vibration. The fundamental pitch is the vibration of the entire string. Let's say that the pitch is a C3. We'll call this the first harmonic. The second harmonic is twice the frequency of the fundamental and accounts for half of the string's length. Our ears will always hear this as the octave higher than the fundamental, or in this case, C4. The third harmonic is three times the frequency of the fundamental, and accounts for one-third the length of the string. We hear this as the perfect fifth above the first octave, or in this case, G4. The fourth harmonic is four times the frequency of the fundamental and accounts for one-fourth of the string's length. We hear this as two octaves above the fundamental, or in this case, C5. The fifth harmonic, you might know where this is going, is five times the frequency of the fundamental and accounts for one-fifth of the string's length. We hear this as the major third above that second octave, or in this case, E5. This pattern continues into divisions and pitches that the human ear can't even pick up on, and the vibrations themselves are so small and fast that we can barely see them. What we do see, even in slow motion, is the sum of all these vibrations. If you have an instrument within reach, pause the video and give this a try. Press any key, fret, etc., and let the pitch ring out. 
listen closely for the overtones that we talked about. If you're having a hard time hearing, allow me to make it more obvious. Using an equalizer, I'm going to isolate these overtones. Here's the first overtone, or the fundamental. Here's the second overtone. Here's the third overtone. Here's the fourth overtone. And here's the fifth overtone. Here's the fundamental one more time. Listen carefully. Do you hear the overtones? I've linked a wonderful demonstration by Leonard Bernstein in the description below and at the top right corner in the eye. I recommend giving that a watch as well. At this point, you might be asking, why does this matter? And I'll be honest, at one point, that was the same question I had. But the truth is, it matters in a huge way. In fact, music, as we know and understand it, is built on these overtones. Our tuning system was built on these overtones. The circle of fifths, which is something else we'll talk more about later on, is built on Pythagoras' theory. And so Western music as a whole was also built on this foundation. But this wasn't a conscious thing. Remember, music existed before Pythagoras discovered the overtone series. Long before this, humans chose these notes simply because they sounded pleasing to the ear, and Pythagoras simply came up with a possible explanation for why. According to Pythagoras and his musical ratio theory, the most stable of all intervals is one with a 3 to 2 ratio. There's a good amount of math involved here that I won't try to explain. For now, all we need to know is that according to the Pythagorean tuning, this 3 to 2 ratio, which is also known as a perfect fifth, is considered the most stable interval in Western music. This fifth, which is the third overtone, is the clearest harmonic aside from the first octave. And like I said before, this idea is the foundation on which Western music theory is built, Our tuning system, our intervals, and our scales are centered around this perfect fifth interval. When you play the two together, you get the foundation of our basic triad structure. If I add in the fifth overtone we talked about earlier, which is the major third, we get a very familiar and stable sound. This is our major triad. See how that works? Now, overtones can get really complicated when you start to play more than one note at a time, so I think it's a good idea to stop here for now. 